From the Renaissance to Middle Earth, Hollywood fantasy strings from East West is your gateway to scoring epic yet enchanting music. This library is a dream come true for composers looking to create authentic fantasy film, television, and game scores. Fantasy Strings is the perfect combination of some of the most iconic medieval, renaissance, and baroque string instruments bundled with today's modern orchestral sound. Now, one of the biggest reasons why I've always been drawn to the East-West Hollywood Orchestra is because it offers an entire cohesive suite of orchestral libraries. And so in line with that all-encompassing collection of instruments, Fantasy Strings is gonna be the first rendition of the new Hollywood Fantasy Orchestra. Fantasy Brass was just released and coming soon will be Fantasy Winds, Fantasy Percussion, Voices, and the Hollywood Fantasy Orchestrator. And I think this step-by-step -step release plan gives composers a way to progressively build their epic and cinematic fantasy orchestra. And I just wanna give East West a huge thank you for sending over a copy with me so that I can discuss it with you all today. And if you do want to check it out for yourself, you can always try the Composer Cloud monthly or annual subscription, or you could bundle each fantasy library together for a discounted launch price. Let's dive into fantasy strings by first looking at East West's new Opus engine. And I say new even though it originally launched in 2021, but to me it's still an incredible upgrade from their older play engine, making it still feel fresh two years later. So in the engine, we're going to get four main tabs from Browse, Play, Perform, and mix. But if you are just getting started, sticking with the browse and play tabs might be the easiest thing to do. So from browse, you'll see all the libraries that you have installed and all the instruments that come within that library. And Fantasy Strings is going to equip composers with instruments like the dulcimer, hardinger fiddles, lutes, viola da gamba, the hurdy-gurdy, and our standard string instruments like the violins, violas, celli, and basses. And each of these instruments were added in to give your orchestrations a unique edge, which will help you create an authentic fantasy soundscape. So first, let's just take a look at the viola da gamba. East-West divides articulations into categories of longs, shorts, effects, legatos, and a master key switch patch. So with that loaded in, we can head on over to the play tab. And the beauty of the Opus engine is its striking interface with the instrument that's loaded up at the center of the dashboard. To the left of the interface, you'll find performance styles, MIDI assignments, and an adjustable envelope. And over on the right, you get customizable reverb settings, mic signals, signals, and a master output. And this is a layout that's common to most or all Opus libraries, so it should give users a familiar experience. And what sets the Opus engine apart, and what I think makes it really powerful, is the inclusion of the unique moods feature where you can pick between soft, classic, and epic sound palettes. The interface changes based on the mood selected, which kind of reflects the feeling of that mood. The classic mood is your default setting, giving you a very balanced tone. The soft mood changes the entire interface to blue and has this intimate and delicate sound regardless of how hard you push the mod wheel and expression. Then the epic mood is going to have this deep red interface and a more aggressive tone compared to the other moods. Actually, these visual mic positions are a powerful tool for smart orchestrations. We get a visual representation of these mic positions, including close, mid, mains, and surround. And this is really helpful because it not only shows the positioning of our strings, but all of the fantasy instruments within the space. Now, something to keep in mind, those mic positions are gonna change based on your chosen mood. The classic mood is gonna have a nice blend between close and main mics. The soft mood adds more depth by using mids and surround mics. And then the epic mood opts for close and surround mics to enhance that cinematic feeling. Now, taking a look at the viola da gamba itself, we have easy access to a preloaded set of articulations, but you can also go more in depth with all of these articulations under this other articulations tab. Probably most similar to the cello, the viola da gamba has this lush and vibrant sound that can add this Baroque feel to your music.
I think it's really great for a resonating melody that's both ancient and timeless. Next up is the Hardinger fiddle, which is a beautiful Norwegian violin-like instrument that's constructed to create a more vibrant and brilliant tone. And this distinctive sound has been featured in modern classics like Howard Shore's Rohan theme from Lord of the Rings and Bear McCreary's string arrangements from God of War. Now, a big staple of Renaissance folk music is the lute. It offers a rich mid-range, but still has a subtle character. And with the lute, it's great for both virtuoso passages, but also smooth background chordal textures. And personally, I really love how it sounds with the soft mode turned on. Now, I just want to point out that whether you're exploring everything that Fantasy Strings has to offer or venturing even further with the full Hollywood orchestra, effective composition techniques for the fantasy genre are going to be key. I actually have a complimentary guide called the Film Composer's Recipe Book, and it goes over the basics of writing for different genres of film and television by breaking everything down to the core ingredients of music, melody, harmony, rhythm, and orchestration. This guide is absolutely free, and if you're interested, I left a link in the description down below. All right, so now Next up is going to be the Mountain Dulcimer. This has a bright yet warm sound with a quality that's kind of similar to a mandolin. And just like with the lute, it's great for fast passages and rich sonic textures. In terms of orchestration, this can actually shine when doubled with the fiddles and lutes. Okay, so this is going to be the dulcimer alone. But let's combine the lute and the Hardinger fiddle with the dulcimer. And then one of my absolute favorites is the hurdy-gurdy. It just has a gritty, thick droning sound that is perfect for very distinct folksy music. And whenever I'm reminded of this instrument, I always think of Bear McCreary actually showing up in God of War playing the hurdy-gurdy. And I actually think it's awesome that East West gives us two options of hurdy-gurdies to choose from.
And then of course, fantasy strings is gonna include foundational modern string instruments. We get both low strings, which has six cellis and four basses, and then high strings, which has eight violins and six violas. And just the addition of this small ensemble of strings can really set the underlying foundation to complement the more ancient and fantasy instruments. Now, the Hollywood Fantasy Strings Library is such a unique addition to the already existing Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition. Everything, including the upcoming releases, were recorded recorded at the same location. This gives you a consistent space whether you're writing standard orchestral music or epic fantasy. And you're just gonna get this seamless blend across all opus libraries. So whether you wanna add a touch of medieval charm to a modern score or transport your audience to a whole new world, Fantasy Strings and the entire Hollywood Fantasy Orchestra can offer a massive range of inspiration for your music. Thank you again, East West, for sending over a copy. And if you wanna see some more opus walkthroughs or just some tips and tricks, then check out these videos next. I'll see you over there and as always, happy composing.